So hi everyone, I'm uh, Leslie Johnson, Senior Programmer with Planet in Focus, and joining me here today is Becky Hutner, Director of the incredible documentary Fashion Reimagined. Um, Becky, thank you so much for joining me here today. Yeah, of course. Thank you for having me. Um, so in Fashion Reimagine, you follow a rising fashion star's journey um, into changing sustainability in the industry. But I'd actually like to start by asking you about yourself um, and your journey, because you are a Toronto-born filmmaker who is now working in England, and Fashion Reimagined is your first feature. Um, and you've largely worked as a producer and editor, and you actually edited um, Rob Stewart's documentary, Revolution, which screened at Planet in Focus. And uh, Rob's legacy is very dear to Planet in Focus. We have an award um, named in his memory, um, the Rob Stewart Youth Eco Hero Award. Um, so I was just wondering if you could start off by telling me a little bit about your journey as a filmmaker and what interests uh, you hold that led you to making Revolution and uh, eventually to Fashion Reimagined. Yeah, thank you so much for that question, Leslie, and for mentioning Rob because he was absolutely instrumental in my filmmaking journey. Um, and I just want to add that I was one of three editors on Revolution, so I didn't like so hand single handedly edit the film, um, but it definitely was a life changing experience. Um, so at the time, this was maybe was it 10 years ago now, maybe 11 years ago that I met Rob and he had this new project, Revolution, um, and needed, needed an editor. Um, and um, I was working as a freelance editor in Los Angeles. Um, I was very passionate about documentaries, had edited one feature documentary myself, um, really wanted to direct feature documentaries, um, but just hadn't really had that opportunity yet. Um, and so, you know, very fortunately, Rob hired me um, to, to co-edit the film. And as you know, the film covers issues like the current mass extinction, the collapse of the oceans. These were issues that were completely new to me um, and really blew my head off. Um, and I have to say, I went through a grieving period, which I know now is quite typical. Um, for people who become, you know, kind of environmentally minded, um, but I didn't know at the time and I actually felt quite alone with those feelings. Um, but it just completely changed my perspective in a very short period of time. Um, and from that moment on, I saw the world through a sustainability lens and it became like the most important part of my life. Um, and so I made a lot of lifestyle changes over subsequent years. Um, but you know, by the time I met Amy, which was then 2017, I was feeling pretty restless because, you know, I mean, it's wonderful to make these lifestyle changes and it is important, but I was wanting to do something more that could have a bigger impact. Um, and so I was working for a production company in London that made short form content for fashion brands. Um, and one of our assignments was to cover the Vogue Designer Fashion Fund, which Amy won that year. Um, and so my assignment was to make a little short um, about that win, about the event and the award. Um, and I, I interviewed her at home. And after that interview, she um, I asked her what was next in her career. And she told me that she was on a mission to make this sustainable collection from field to finished garment. She wanted to meet the cotton farmers and the and the wool farmers. Um, and I, that was the light bulb moment. I was like, this is, this is that opportunity to do something bigger. I'd never met a designer, you know, I was working in kind of the fashion space, but I'd never met a designer who was, who was, had embarked on that kind of a journey. Um, and so, yeah, that was just the moment I knew that, that her journey had to be filmed and then it had to be turned into a feature film. That's amazing. Um... And you can really feel the tension in her journey because she's given herself such a tall order to make um, her brands as sustainable as possible. Um, you know, considering being traceable, organic, 
you know, using minimal water and chemicals, being socially responsible, considering animal welfare, having a, you know, small carbon footprint, it really is, you know, a huge deal what she did. Um, and at some points, it doesn't feel like it's going to work out. And so I was wondering um, about the challenges that you had as a filmmaker, following an unfolding uh, journey like Amy's um, in into her highs and lows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it was definitely emotional and the setbacks that Amy experienced, you know, we experienced with her. Um, and it is, you know, when you're following a real time story and not knowing what kind of twists and turns it's going to take, it's such a roller coaster. Yeah. And, you know, there were times where we're like, well, is this where the story ends? Like, what are, if, if this is a workout with Pedro, like, what are we going to do? Um, and then, you know, we didn't cover this much in, in um, the film, but COVID was a really big deal. And, and Mother of Pearl was hugely threatened by COVID. Um, um, retailers canceling orders with factories and with small brands was like quite widely publicized, but Mother of Pearl was hugely affected by that. All of a sudden, all their orders were canceled and what were they going to do? Um, and people weren't shopping, um, which is a good and a bad thing. But um, so that was another part where like, is this where the story ends? Do they fold, you know? So, um, so yeah, it was a really emotional, gripping experience and you never knew what was going to happen next both good and bad like we didn't know that amy was going to be catapulted to the forefront of the movement in the uk she was she was quite a small niche designer when we started the journey so that was like a wonderful surprise and a whole part of the film that i never anticipated um but yeah you definitely like you know it was kind of like buckle up and we were we were it was a crazy ride Oh, that's amazing. And, you know, you you really um, capture it quite well. And, you know, you take the viewer like along with you, you know, <laughs> it's very yeah. um, skillfully crafted that way. Um, yeah, I wanted it to be kind of like an adventure film as well. Yeah, yeah, no, I'm definitely I, I mean, and I think you you have such a great relationship with Amy that you can really sort of get to know her on such a um, personal level. And so, you know, you really do feel for her when, you know, things as, you know, things are swinging wildly in her journey. Um, and so the film uh, documents sort of the rebranding of um, a sustainable mother of Pearl, um, but it's been now a few years since you've probably been in production on it. So I'm wondering where the company is at today with those core values. Did it remain successful? Um, and did they kind of continue to grow with these ideas? Yeah, no, that's a good question. Um, so Amy and Chloe have remained completely true to their values um, and they've done incredibly well with it. So no frills um, to begin with was one sustainable line within the mother of pearl brand. And the idea was if that was successful, then they would infiltrate what they learned into the rest of the brand. Okay. And if it wasn't, Amy honestly probably would have left fashion. Um, and so it was successful and they were able to do it to a degree. There was a lot more work to do. Um, but by, I want to say 2019 or 2020, um, they were able to make Mother of Brand 100% um, in line with those values, which is an incredible, incredible feat. That's within about three years that a wow. small brand with no, I mean, Yes, they had the money from the Vogue Designer Fashion Fund. It wasn't a huge amount of money. No, no extra staff um, that they were completely able to transform their brand. So that is a huge lesson to like all fashion brands out there. Like it can be done. Um, and so, so yeah, I'm, they have expanded on the work that they did with No Frills. So they started out with just two fabrics, wool and cotton. Um, since then, they've started working with Tencel which is a fiber made um, from trees, um, from sustainably managed forests in Scandinavia. Um, and so they're using a lot of that. It requires a lot less water um, and a lot less land than the other two. Um, and Amy is actually working directly with Tencel to kind of um, promote that fabric to designers and also to customers, to educate customers on um, why it's such a great choice. Um, there's so many other things Amy's doing. I wish I could, there's two big things that she's doing that I can't announce 
was one with someone very famous. Um, but um, she's Something also for us all to follow along and look forward there's very, to. There's very good news. So keep your keep your eyes out. Um, but she's also like on the board of some key organizations in this space, um, the Institute of the Institute of Positive Fashion in the UK, which is looking at, you know, making the UK fashion industry much more sustainably sustainable. Um, she's on the board of Copenhagen Fashion Week, which is aiming to be the most sustainable fashion week in the world. Um, so she's a very busy girl. Um, and, and yeah, she's just, you know, she's, she's really kept up the fight while becoming a mother of two um, and, and running like a very, very busy fashion brand. Um, you touched on this a little bit, but I'm just wondering your thoughts about, um, I mean, you know, following the supply chain um, was such an incredible thing to do in this film. I, I found it so eye-opening and it really does show you kind of how egregious the fashion industry is at the end of the day. Um, and I'm wondering, you know, can, can these big brands really uh, make the changes that Amy uh, did make? Or, you know, do we really have to overall overhaul the whole system? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a good question and a big question. Um, I do think we have to overhaul the whole system. I think there needs to be a new narrative for fashion. Um, there's a lot of amazing research that's been done by organizations like the Global Fashion Agenda um, into what that would look like, you know, gathering hard data and kind of deciding like what the biggest levers are and and what will what changes will actually um be effective um and the results are actually like a really exciting new fashion industry where we have smaller wardrobes but they're high quality pieces that we really love that last for a long time because we're buying more thoughtfully and we're buying less um it's um, a flourishing resale market. Um, so, uh, I mean, something really exciting is that the pre-loved market is hugely accelerating. And I mm. heard one stat that it's set to um, be accelerating at a faster pace by 2030 than fast fashion. So that's really, yeah, that's really right. encouraging. Um, a flourishing rental market, um, access to easy access to repair services, um, all that stuff I think is like really positive and really exciting. It means that we can still enjoy fashion, like great fashion, better fashion, and in so many different ways and in ways that are accessible to more people. Um, so, so yeah, I do think that it needs to be overall overhauled, but what that looks like, I think is very positive. And I think no big brand, a lot of these big brands that are making huge, huge, huge profits out of exploitation and out of abusing the environment are never going to change on their own, even though they might pretend to, even though their marketing might say they're changing, yeah. like these small sustainable lines yes. that represent 0.1% of mm -hmm. their profits while they continue business as usual. Um, no, there a lot of these brands are not going to change on their own. So we definitely need legislation. We had, we were, um, so we just had a little bit of a technical issue there for a second and we um, were talking about parts of the system that need to be overhauled and, um, you know, what consumers that can be doing and should be doing um, to, you know, to be addressing these issues in the, in the, in the industry. Um, I'm wondering if you can uh, maybe tell me about how audiences can become engaged with these issues, how they can become uh, engaged with the film. I believe you have an impact campaign also uh, that you guys are doing. So maybe uh, we could talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for that question. Um, so first of all, I'll answer, you know, what audience can be doing um, maybe in their own lives because there's some really easy, um, there's really easy things that we can do around our shopping habits and our relationship with fashion. Um, so what I've been telling people a lot of this kind of festival season um, is before you make your next purchase, ask yourself three questions, uh, which are, do I really need this? Do I really love this? And will I wear it for years to come? 
And I think just asking those three questions can help us all um, to buy less and to make better choices and to make our clothes last longer, which of course keeps resources in circulation for longer and um, clothing out of landfills. Um, and then in terms of how to engage with this issue, I mentioned legislation and I would really urge everyone to, um, you know, there's different legislation popping up in different parts of the world. And so I would encourage everyone to research what's happening in your part of the world. I'm not sure, I have to say, what is happening in Canada specifically. Um, as I mentioned, there's the Fabric Act in the US, um, which is all about supporting garment workers, ensuring minimum wage, ensuring um, safe working conditions um, within the US. And then the Fashion Act, which affects the whole world um, and is a really exciting piece of legislation um, that requires fashion brands with a turnover of over 10 million that are doing business in New York which is like all fashion brands are doing business in New York. So that's what's so brilliant about it um, to map 50% of their supply chain, um, which I just think is so, so super exciting if it can actually be pushed through. Um, so those are just two examples of legislation. And even if it's not legislation in your own country, fashion is global. Um, so, so it still affects, you know, whether it originates in the U.S. or originates in Europe, it still affects the industry, it still affects all of us. So we want, so we were discussing what audiences can do to be engaged and how they can become engaged with the film. Great, yeah. So, um, there are so many ways that audiences can kind of reduce their impact when it comes to fashion and and kind of have a more positive relationship with fashion. Um, and what I've been telling people, you know, over this festival season is before you make your next purchase, ask yourself three questions, which are, do I really need this? Do I really love it? And will I keep it for years to come? And I just think asking these three questions will help us all to buy less and to make better choices um, and hopefully increase the longevity of garments, keep them out of landfill, um, keep resources in circulation for longer. Um, and then um, there's a lot happening um, that's really exciting. Um, I mentioned legislation. Um, so there's bills being developed in different parts of the world. And I encourage people to research, you know, what's happening in, in their region, in their country, but also what's happening elsewhere, because of course, fashion is global. So any, you know, law, whether it originates in New York, um, is still going to affect the whole industry. Um, so I touched briefly on the Fabric Act and the Fashion Act um, in the US. And the Fabric Act is a landmark of piece of legislation um, that would ensure minimum wage for garment workers, um, that would improve working conditions. Um, the aim is to eliminate sweatshops in the US. Um, so that's a really important piece of legislation uh, to check out. And then the Fashion Act um, targets brands at, with a turnover, fashion brands with a turnover of over 10 million doing business with New York, um, which is like every fashion brand does business with New York, which is what's so brilliant about this legislation. Um, um, and it re would require them to map 50% of their supply chain and identify um, the environmental and social impacts um, within that 50%. Um, so I just think that would be so brilliant if it was pushed through. Um, and so, yeah, I, I urge everyone to check those out. Um, and then we, alongside the release of the film, uh, we have an impact campaign with Together Films. Um, and so we're working with some amazing partners in the space, um, including the British Fashion Council, which produces London Fashion Week, um, British Vogue, uh, Fashion Revolution, Graduate Fashion Week, which represents um, 80 plus fashion schools across the UK and internationally. Um, and so we're working with these different organizations to bring the film to different important stakeholders, whether it's like holding screenings in parliament, um, holding screenings for fashion brands. Um, we've had interest from everyone from Amazon fashion to eBay, you know, they want to see this film and screen it for their employees. Um, I'm really, really excited about screening um, for fashion schools. Actually, that's one mm. thing that I'm like, one of the things I'm most excited about um, because we've had interns work on fashion reimagined and they're so 
open-minded and they've grown up with these issues anyways and they're going to be affected more than anyone by these issues so they're just so open to them and e like quick to adopt mm -hmm. um these values and, and so we've had wonderful experiences with fashion students working on this film then running back to their friends at fashion school telling them all about it I get emails like a few months later I only buy secondhand I haven't bought a single piece of new clothing since I worked on your film and I'm doing a sustainable collection at university yeah uh, you're back now and uh you know maybe um if I could just say um first of all lovely jacket um Oh, thank you're, you. You're wearing your um, Mother of Pearl jacket. Yes, and, this is from um, the very first Mother of Pearl collection. Oh, it's very beautiful. I'm oh, sorry, no Pearls collection. Excellent. Um, so we were having a, um, a little bit of technical uh, issues at the end there, but um, I think that uh, you gave a lot um, for people to um, follow along with. And if, if people wanted to check out more about what they can do, um, you know, perhaps um, checking out the website um, and following up there um, would be a, a great idea. And uh, so again, we just wanted to say thank you so much for joining us today and congratulations on a really wonderful film. Uh, thank you so much, Leslie. And yeah, the website would be a great place to check out. It's fashionreimaginefilm.com. Um, and we're also on all the social media channels. Um, so yes, do you check us out. Thanks so much. Thank you. <laughs>